towards us. What Scripture says is that He sees royalty. He sees chosen people, a holy nation, something that He Himself desires to possess. His prized possession. Probably we see wrinkles and messy and gray and, and, and we see overeaters and under-exercisers. We see limitations and insecurities and brokenness. But when God looks at a thing, He is only able to see it from the perspective of the potential that thing has in His hands. Imagine these first century believers who were the first recipients of these words. They were persecuted, certainly down and outer, social uh, outcast more than likely. They weren't people of influence. They weren't people of money. They weren't people of power. And, and God declares over them that they are chosen, holy, royal, and prized. When God's gaze was upon them, all He could see were radical revolutionaries on the verge of changing the world. Think back to the Old Testament when God saw potential. I mean, think about Adam and Eve at the very beginning. Sure, they screwed up and sure, they dropped the ball. But He didn't, he didn't strike them down. He just sent them out. Because He wasn't willing to give up hope on what they could potentially become in the future. Uh, a couple pages after that, I, I read this verse. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. The Lord regretted He had made man and determined to blot them out. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. God still saw some potential. I think about Sarah's womb. That wrinkly old thing, at the age she was, yet God saw its potential. Moses could do little more than stutter and stammer, and yet God used him to lead the children of Israel to freedom. When the children of Israel were whiny and complaining, God still saw potential. Page after page after page, the Old Testament is filled with God looking at people even though they're broken, even though they're fallen, even though they're insecure, even though they're inadequate. God would look at them and see potential. Jesus, choosing those first disciples. I mean, if I were Jesus, I wouldn't have done what He did. I would have gone to the synagogue the day of graduation and I would have picked the top five. And I would have said, you come with me and we'll change the world. You come with me. But that's not what He did, did He? He went to the shore and He called fishermen. He called average guys. People that, that for no... There was nothing about them that made them desirable. And yet that's where Jesus went. The Samaritan woman at the well. When everybody else only saw promiscuity, Jesus only saw promise. When the, the woman was caught in adultery and they were about to stone her. Well, what did Jesus do? He pointed out that all of us have lives of sin. But she still had potential. Zacchaeus, hanging from a tree just for a glimpse. His community thought of him as a deceiver. Jesus saw him as a disciple. The crowd around the cross, probably the, the, the biggest place we see it the most, they're hurling insults at Jesus, hurling who knows what else at Jesus. And, and Jesus looks out over the crowd and what does He say? Forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them, Father, because these people still have great potential. The criminal on the cross next to Jesus had potential. Aren't you glad that God sees what we can be, not what we are in the moment? I know I sure am. I'm still shocked 30 years after the fact that, that God was able to do something in my life. Today is Mother's Day, and it's not difficult to say that I think most of the women I know are potential people. They see what we can become, not what we are. I think... Example, we were cleaning Bailey's room not too long ago. And Bailey's got this wooden knickknack rack that you hang things on. Well, all the hooks were broke off. So you know what I did? I picked it up and I headed to the trash. Uh, oh, no, contraire. But it says, wait! Don't throw that away. It's got potential. 
And so it's sitting in our garage for the last three weeks. Because what I saw as trash, she saw as treasure. I think about Libby and, and, and all of this second row right here. The women in the second row, they take more junk. <laughs> and Rob's giving me the arm pump back there. I've sent them a bunch of junk. They see the treasure it can become. I know their men do not see treasure anywhere in that pile. I think about my second grade teacher, Miss Bishop, who I wasn't the greatest student in the world. I wasn't the best behaved kid in town. I kind of had this imagination that was way out there. And so we would get these writing assignments and I would write these crazy stories and, and all my friends were like, man, your story's weird, you're strange. But Miss Bishop would let me sit on her lap and she would say, oh, that is the most wonderful thing I've ever read. She saw potential. Most of my other teachers just saw problem. But she saw potential. And I'm so grateful that she did. I guess I mentioned it earlier, but I think about so many women who used to sit in this church that have been long gone for, for 20 and 30 years and how they week after week showed up and taught Sunday school classes. Week after week they would teach choir and, and, and youth event things. And just how many women that God used just for me to influence me and shape me and mold me. When our kids make the courthouse news, or our grandkids are running wild all over town, or our grades are less than stellar, or our room is a wreck, or our life skills are horrendous, or, 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 or. Moms and grandmas refuse to see anything but the potential that we have. They continually hold out hope for what we could be in the hands of Almighty God. I'm reminded of, of all my moms, and my grandmas, and my great-grandmas. Reminded of the many women who've influenced my life. In the words to the song, one thing remains. And I won't read it all, but the chorus pretty much just says, Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, your love, it never gives up on me. And it's higher than the mountains that I face, and it's stronger than the power of the grave, and it's constant in the trial and the change. One thing remains, this one thing remains. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Created in the image of God, ladies, the same can be said of you. That your love never fails, it never gives up, and it never runs out on the rest of us, even when it would be totally justified if you did. I'm grateful that you all have the ability to see potential when nobody else does. Whether it's intentional or just built in, what you believe about God, it matters. The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 3.20 uh, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine. We're grateful today that you women believe that about God. Or you'd have given up on each of us a long time ago. So as I close this morning, I'm trying to sum all this up. I want to say that each and every one of us are called to live these kind of lives, not just our women. We like to, to bump that sensitive stuff over onto them and to their shoulders. But, but it's what God expects of all of us. It's not just reserved for women. We should each be praying to have the eyes of God that are capable of seeing the potential that is possible in the hands of our amazing Heavenly Father. If only we could see more like God sees things, we'd attempt so much more for God. The earnestness of our prayers that we pray, the limits that we'd set for ourselves and for our church, they would all fall away. For with God, all things are possible if we'd only believe. So ladies, today we thank You and we strive to become more like You. We thank You for believing in the limitless abilities of God 
We thank You for seeing the potential in us. May we pray. God, this morning, each one of us are the direct result of the efforts of so many. And today we give You thanks. We ask, O oh God, that, that You would give us eyes to see like You see. Now, we're quick to give up on people. We're quick to give up on circumstances. We're quick to throw in the towel. But God, with our life in Your hands, there is limitless potential. Help us see that more and more each and every day. God, thank You. Thank You so much for blessing us with great ladies of faith. May we continue to make them in the future that ladies would grow and come and take the place of those who've gone before, that they'd strive to continue to lead the church, that they'd strive and continue to lead in the home. God, we're grateful today. We pray in Christ's name.